Shalom everyone. Great to be with you once again. Pashat HaShavua with Rav Berg. Pashat Vayera. Second Shir on Pashat Vayera. And we're following the footsteps of Avraham Avinu. Midrash Arova learns about Avraham Avinu. And here, what many years ago in Yerushalayim, they learned the famous Posek Halacha. And in those days, a person would <coughs> go to uh, uh, find a chicken, go to the shochet, uh, shech the chicken, uh, shech, and then uh, have the chicken shechted, and then he'd take, go to the rub to see if it's kosher. And uh, as you know, 100, 120 years ago, people were very poor and there wasn't much food. And the Rav, the famous Rav, sitting in his little uh, room in the, in the Rova, with a few students around, and he's sitting at the table learning or teaching Torah, knock on the door, in walks a lady, uh, Shalom Rabbi, he knows her very well, and she's ha- in her hand she has a, she so doesn't have plastic bags, she had some newspaper, and on the newspaper was a chicken, a dead chicken. Okay, so she puts the she put the dead chicken on the table, and she said, Rabbi, I managed to find the chicken for Shabbat for my six children, and uh, and uh, what's the halacha of this chicken? Is it kosher or not? That's what we have for Shabbat. And the Rabbi said, Hmm, very interesting. Uh, would you mind waiting outside? And uh, she, he didn't usually ask that, and she went out. And the Rav, uh, students looked at the Rav, what's happening? And he picked up the, the chicken with a newspaper, turned around and walked into his little kitchen, now the tiny little kitchens, a little kitchen corner. And uh, he came out with a different chicken on a p- the same piece of paper. And, you, and uh, the students said, what's going on here? And he put this other chicken on the table and he called her, hey, uh, lady. She came in here and he said, he said, he looked at the chicken, he said, lady, this chicken is kosher la madrin. Take this chicken and enjoy Shabbat with your family. She was so excited. Finally, she found food for her family for Shabbat and left. And after that, uh, you know, he left, the student said to him, Rabbi, what you do? <laughs> Why did you take the, that chicken in there and you bought the, uh, your, the other chicken over here? What's going on? The Rav, famous Rav said, well, the chicken that we, she brought was... <laughs> dead was totally non-kosher there was no chance for that chicken to be kosher so what i did i took the 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 non-kosher chicken into our kitchen took our kosher chicken that my wife was going to prepare for shabbat and i brought it out and i gave it to her the the people said what you going to eat rabbi i said no it's fine she has a family she has children she'll they'll enjoy the chicken my wife and i we can manage with some bread and some soup that my my wife will make chesed that is what we're talking about, chesed. So, Rav Tzvi the Kuk, Rav Kuk's son, we have to speak about and say that Pashas come in twos. Pashat Lech Lecha and Vayera come in two. They are the Avram Avinu Pashas. Then we have, after that, we have the <coughs> Chaye Sarah and Teldot, the Pashas of Yitzchak. And then we have Vayetze and Vayishlach, the Pashas of Yaakov. The Pashas of Abraham are uh, Lech Lecha and, and uh, Vayera. Lech Lecha speaks about Abraham Avinu's Emunah, his faith in Hashem. Uh, just like the Ramban says, Masse Avod Siman Lebanim. What the Avod do is a sign for us, us, the children of Abraham Avinu. And so Abraham Avinu and Sarah walk hand in hand through the ten tests, from test to test to test, getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And that's what we learned in Pasha Lech Lecha, the amazing faith and Emunah of Abraham Avinu and Sarah. In our parasha, oops, we see a different aspect to Abraham's life. The parasha opens up, he's, he's just at Brit Milah, and he sees these three people coming, people, who, dirty people who worship the dust on their feet, and he runs up to them, and he does the mitzvah of welcome him to the tent. Whoa, he's uh, back and forth, running back and vay, 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 yarots, vay, yamah, fast as possible. Then we see Avram Avinu praying for the people of storm. And he shouts at Hashem, Chalila lecha, chasva chalila, you should destroy storm. Avraham Avinu is Mr. Chesed, Mr. Loving Kindness. That is what we learn from Avram Avinu. From Yitzhak we learn Din and Gura. From Yaakov we learn Emet. 
But the Abraham Avinu is Mr. Chesed. He brought loving kindness to the world. And so, Abraham Avinu teaches us about Chesed. And if you look in our Gemaras and the Midrashim and uh, the Masechet Avot, we see, we see this. The first thing I'd like to quote is from Masechet Yevamot Daf Ayin Tet Amud Aleph, and does appear in the Midrashim as well. So the Gemara says, Shlosha Simanim Yesh Bo This nation, this nation has three signs, has three characteristics. The first one is Rachmanim, be merciful. Jews are merciful. Baishanim, wow, shy. And in other words, not arrogant. And not uh, 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 and they, they, they bear themselves with shyness. And the last one says the Gemara is Gumlei Chasadim. And we learn this all from Abraham Avinu. And if you look at the Marasha on that, on that, uh, on that Gemara, he says, Kol uh, Anyone has mercy on other people. Be'yadua, it's known, Shehu Mizar'o Shel Avraham Avinu. He is from Avraham Avinu. Avraham Avinu ingrained within us loving kindness. We, uh, we learn <coughs> that, uh, that uh, Avraham Avinu, uh, uh, this Perik Avot, Perik Avav, Perik Avot, sorry, Kol Mi Sheesh Be'yadua Shoshad Varim Alalu, Anyone who has these three things, we tell me that she Avram Avinu, the students of Avram Avinu, and the first one is Ein Tova. Ein Tova. So Ein Tova is all about um, Chesed, about loving other people. What does Ein Tova, a good I mean, is to look at the world in an optimistic way, with the eyes of Emunah, of faith to look for good deeds and to do good deeds and to look at everything in a nice fashion, in goodness. And that was Avraham Avinu. He wanted to do goodness. We learn in Perka what the famous uh, sentence, Oev et makom, Oev et abriot. A righteous person like Avraham Avinu loves Hashem and loves mankind. And uh, we have, uh, we all are students of the Avraham Avinu, in that it's ingrained with every Jew. Jews, if you look in every community around the world, in your communities and Israel, there are so many gemachim. What's a gemach? An organization that does chesed. Chesed is to do good without getting in return. Apart from the Hebrew Kaddish and everything else, uh, people can, you can learn money, you can learn pacifiers, you can learn diapers, you can learn uh, anything possible, uh, mattresses for Shabbat, whatever you want, you can learn for free. Jews are giving and helping each other, and especially now in the, the, the war, we see that really um, people are helping each other in a big way. Avat Israel, giving, giving, giving. That's what a Jew does, and we learned that from Avram Avinu. Beautiful little story I'd like to, I like to tell, uh, anecdote. Rav Chaim the, the the famous person who founded the, the Belozhan Yeshiva, great Yeshiva in Europe, he used to say often that when you learn, sit learning Torah or Gamora, you should have your hand under the page like this. Why? He said, you must always have your hand under the page so that if you see another Jew who needs help, another Jew in need, we can close our Gamora and run and help them. That's a Jew. Those are the Talmud, the students of Abraham Avinu. So now we have to examine something very interesting in this parsha uh, and last week's parsha. We learn about uh, this woman called Hagar. What's going on over here with this Hagar woman? It's very strange. Why does Sarah give Hagar to Abraham? And why does Abraham agree at all? And what's the connection? What's going on over here? So, let's examine and have a look at the Psukim. In Pasha Lech Lecha, we see um, Perek Tetzayim, the Sarai Eshet Avram, Sarai, she's still Sarai, the wife of Abraham, Avram, she didn't give, uh, give him, didn't give him children, and she had this maid servant called Hagar, he told Rashi, tells us she was, she was the princess of Egypt, etc. And then, uh, she says to Avram, uh, but Thomas said to Abraham, "Inay atzarani Hashem milaled milaled. Hashem won't. It doesn't give me children. I don't give birth. 
בואו נעז שפחתי, take my mail seven, אולי ייבנה ממנה. Maybe I will be pulled from her. וישמע אברהם לכל שרי. And Abraham listened. What's going on over here? So we can certainly say in those days, people had, um, had maid servants, and if a maid servant uh, gave birth, then the, the child belonged to the mistress of the home, whatever. So, you know, that's simple. But, but here there's much more involved. Why does Sarah do this? And so we look in uh, Rashi. Rashi brings... So uh, the verse says, Ulai ibanevi mena. I'll give you, I'll give Avram my main servant, Hagar, and maybe I'll be built through her. What does that mean? So Rashi brings that I, uh, in the merit of give, me giving Hagar, uh, I'll have children. Very strange, you know. And uh, it's even stranger, Vaishma Avram Nikol Sarai. So we have lots of questions. Why does she do that? And why does Avram agree? And yeah, we have the Ramban, Nachmanides. Nachmanides, 700 years ago, one of the first people who came on Aliyah, he left Spain, came to Jerusalem. There were two people in Jerusalem, two Jews in Jerusalem. There was no Sefer Torah in Jerusalem. He made a little community in Jerusalem. We think that maybe the shul that we daven in, that are called the Ramban shul, maybe that was his shul. Um, and Ramban says the most beautiful explanation of this whole thing. So Ramban over here says the following, Vayishma uh, Avram l'kol Sarai, Avram listened to the voice of Sarai, and Rashi, uh, Ramban points out, Velo amar akadu vayasken, doesn't say, and she, and he did so, Aval mi, aval ki yishama b'kol Sarai, he listened to Sarai's voice, and hear moz, it hints to us, and now the Ramban explains, Sarai was giving everything to Abraham. She has a deep love for Abraham. She knew Abraham wanted children. She knew Abraham was close to the age of of a hundred. She wanted to do make him happy and make give him give him, enable him to have children. She couldn't give him children. So Sarai was giving everything she had out of love for Abraham. With all her chesed, she was giving Abraham the ability to have to have a child through Hagar. So why did Avram agree? Says Ramban, he agreed because he wanted to do and please Sarah. Look what it says, Vaishma Avram le called Sarah. He listened to his voice, to Sarah's voice. He wanted to please Sarah. And here we see the most amazing relationship between two people. We have Sarah in love with Avraham and wanted to please her husband, Avraham. And we see uh, <coughs> Avraham agreeing to what to 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 what Sarai asked for. Avram wasn't a ladies man. He wasn't interested in having other ladies. He wanted to fulfill Sarai's wishes. And that is the true love. Giving. And that's what we learn from Avram Avinu and Sarai. Giving to others. Chesed to others. And that really teaches us the most the, the, what a re- true relationship should be. A true relationship should be between husband and wife, between friends, should be a giving relationship. Sarai gives to Abraham. Abraham gives to Sarai. And together they make the, pers- the most perfect relationship between them. Okay, so now we have to bring the writings of Rav Eliyahu Desle in the famous book, Mikhtav Meliyahu. And uh, many people know this, but we have to speak about it at this point. He, Rav Lesa, was Rosh Ponovich, came in Aliyah to Eretz Yisrael, and he has these wonderful books called Mikhtev Meliyahu, Letter from Meliyahu, and he speaks about Vahta Recha Kamocha, loving your fellow Jews yourself. And he says that every Jew has within him the power and the, the spark of giving. We know it comes from Abraham Avinu. He was Mr. Chesed, Parashat Shavua, Abraham Avinu and Sarah. They were giving people. And the question is, does loving lead to giving? Or does giving lead to loving? So everyone says, wow, you know, you love someone, you give to them. The more you love them, you give to them. But this is says, no, no, no. The more you give, the more you love. The more you put into anything, the more you love. And so a parent loves his children so much because he puts everything he has into that child. 
if you have a good friend and you have a birthday, give them 50 shekels or 50 dollars, yeah, it's meaningless. But if you work hard to make a gift, whatever, it's much more. And so the secret to a good relationship, but with a person's husband or wife. Chesed, Ava, loving kindness and love from Avram Avinu, and it's ingrained within the Jewish people forever. And with that, we wish all our brave soldiers, wherever they are, who have such nisirut nefesh, self-sacrifice from Israel, we wish them good well. We wish uh, and pray to Hashem that the, that the Chatufim, the people who are captured and in prison, should be released as soon as possible. We have pray to Hashem that all those people who are wounded and hurt should have a refuah shleima, and Hashem should give strength and comfort to all the people who have been hurt by this, this big war. But we know. And so... The Jewish people will always be victorious. We'll overcome our enemies. And we are overcome our enemies. And we'll get stronger and stronger. And the Jewish people will always be on top. And we're waiting for the big days that, of the Gula that are coming. Let's give and let's love. And uh, I wish everyone well from Midrash Darova. Shalom everybody.